Hello viewers, it's your boy Kofi Besu Jr. And we are back again on the Total Boxing Show where we discuss what's happening in boxing around the world. We take it straight from Ghana, we enter Africa, and from there we take it into the world, you know, and then bring you boxing updates from the world. Today I'm going to be here with Kujo Amedoda, a regular host of the um, Total Boxing Show. Today, unfortunately, um, so uh, so I won't be able to join us. So it will be just me and Amedoda, and we'll be breaking down what is happening in the world of boxing from our perspective. The opinions are from from us, what we feel and what we think. I'm going to take, take uh, I'm going to bring it to you live on Kbox TV to you. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube, kindly jump onto the YouTube uh, and subscribe. The link to subscribe is in the is in the comment below. So just look at the comment or the the description. And then select the click on the on the link and then subscribe to our YouTube. We'll be here every Thursday to bring you boxing updates from Ghana through to Africa and to the world. Let me bring on my guest real quick uh, as we discuss what's happening in the world of boxing. You know, Manny Pacquiao is in the news. Um, you guys is also in the news um, in Ghana. Richie Coming will be fighting in U in the USA. God willing, next week Saturday we'll talk about it briefly. And we also have Jesse Manuel Plans calling a few of fighters, including Gary Antonio. And then Wasiru Mohammed. Yes. Don't forget that he signed a contract with DD Boxing Promotions in the US not too long ago. And the good thing is that he might be coming or he might be stepping into the ring as early as April 10th. You know, um, or that, that'll be his, his, his debut outside Ghana or his debut in the US. And, He's looking to already make a mark and to let the people know that he's going to be a very strong a strong force in the division. Now, before we talk of the other things that is going to happen in the show, let me, we already have Kujo over here. So, Kujo, welcome to KBOX TV. Thank you very much, Kofi. Yeah, Kujo, how's your, how's your weekend? How's the week going? Well, yeah, a very cool week and mm. weekend mm. we are around. We thank God. We thank God. So far, from January to now, any 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 highlight, boxing highlight that um, because I feel like we haven't seen the big the biggest fight yet. You know, like we know COVID nineteen is here, but like boxing has been a little bit down. Or what do you think? Boxing is very down. It's very very mm. down. Fights are not happening the way they, it should happen. Promoters mm. are not forcing themselves for fights and mm. things like that. And then. The mm -hmm. top boxers are refusing to fight. And those are the things. Yeah. That's yeah. the most annoying part. The top mm -hmm. boxers are refusing to fight each other. Yeah. Yeah. No. So it's making it difficult. Yeah. Like looking very, very at the difficult. super world, look looking at the waterway division now. All the fantastic guys are there. Talking about Ugas, is in. He's back in play. He wants he wants he wants the big dog. Whether he's going to make whether the fight will even happen or not is another thing, like another big thing in question. But you know, we'll, we'll talk about that fight now. Let's talk from let's start from Ghana. God willing, next week, Richie Kome is going to be, be in the ring uh, against Marines. What should people expect from our own Oblite uh, Kome? Well, Richie is a very crack boxer. You mm -hmm. can say anything that you want to say, but he's a Boxer that, whenever that is in the ring, everybody will pay attention to uh, watch him and things like that. Okay, he's a very good boxer. Very unfortunately, he lost his title, and then now that is this is the first coming, this is the coming back fight for him. And then against a guy who is also coming back. Okay, and then his coming back is a very very controversial loss to. To Fimo Lopez. Okay. So, yeah. uh, he lost to Romero. And then everybody know, uh, but it was, uh, the, 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 the paper is saying that it's controversial. Oh, so that talking about coming up To put something on paper again. So that is the, 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 the opponent for Richard Comey. But it's a mm. guy that I believe that hey, Richard Comey can crack him down in the mm. time. Mm. But boxing is something that you need to be very, <laughs> very careful and very, very steadyful about. Right. The guy, right, right. yes, that guy is a slick boxer, very, very slick. Right. Okay. And then if a slick, slick boxer is coming against a crack boxer, okay, a boxer who is coming in with all, 
banging and things like that, which is uh, 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 which is part of Richard coming. Then you have to keep your cool and see what will happen. And that is you have to keep your cool but and see me, what's going to happen. I believe strongly that Richard Comey is having the upper hand because he made it already. Nice. Now nice. it's a coming nice. bad fight. He have no excuse. Mm. Mm. He only need to go into the ring, crack this guy out, and then carry his name back. Nice. That's nice. my idea. You said it. You said it all. Um, you know, I, I read an article on. Um, that was written by uh, Thomas of Boxing Scenes this week. And I think he had a one-on-one -on -one with Richie Comey. And Richie Comey said that he wants to become a world champion again. But before he'll be able to achieve that dream, he has to first of all beat uh, Mariners. And so he said, oh, my man, they gave me the same love that I have. Um, I, I, he was talking about people of Ghana, that people in Ghana still show him the love that... Um, uh, they still show him love, even though he lost his title. They still, they still show him love. And he feels like the same way people will still show him love as he'll be entering the ring on, uh, on, on Saturday night. What, what do you think will be Ghanaian's uh, uh, like, looking at Ghanaian, like the Ghanaian boxing fans now? What do you think the expectation is at the moment uh, 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 for, for Richie Comey? What are they expecting specifically on our boy? On Saturday night, would it, do you think it's going to be a, 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 a knockout or a, a decision? Or what exactly are Ghanaians expecting from Richie Kome next week Saturday? Uh, Ghanaians just want to see Richie Kome's comeback as successful. That is all the Ghanaians mm. want to see. Mm. But Richard Kome in boxing need to crack, take this guy out before round 12, so that he carry his name back. To me, what... I think, I think we've lost um, Amadouda here. Um, we'll, we'll try to get him on and then get his opinion on what, what exactly Ghanaians are expecting from Michikome. On Saturday night. Um, don't forget, like I said, Richie was in the news of boxing scenes, and you know he said very interesting things about you know about Ghanaians and the the love that they have for him. He says he feels disappointed because he let the whole country down, you know, and especially because if the people believe in you, but the Lopez fight didn't go the way he thought it was going to go. But yeah, things happen, you know. But really, it didn't really, you know. Ghana didn't really give him like the vibe that oh you lost so we are not going to be with you anymore or something. But even though he lost, Ghanaians were still there for him. It's something that he really cherished and he really loved and kept him going. I mean, that you were saying something and um, the network. Yeah, Kobe. What I'm saying is, uh, Ghanaians are ready to hear the news of Richard Kome is back with a win. Right. The boxing enthusiasts want Richard Comey to come out with something different. Right. The paper, uh, Richard Comey himself, on, uh, 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 let's say, in boxing, need to come back with a crack to take back his name. Nice. And me, per, per se, I'm saying that Richard Comey is supposed to come out with a bank clear this guy out before round 12 so that he will be put on the list of 135. Okay. okay on the top okay. list of 135. If he's not able to do that and he come out with decision, they, will not, they are not going to mention his name. Hmm. And if he try with that decision, what will happen is they will push him down. No, but it depends on the, the performance judges. that he will be able to put up. For instance, if you put that kind of performance like that, you know, you know, there are some twelve, there are some twelve rounds fights which are very boring, and there are some twelve rounds fights you always want to go back and watch, especially if the opponent is tough, a very stubborn, stubborn opponent, a very good fighter, very skillful fighter, just like you. You always know that those two, these two people will, will give you something like very spectacular. And looking at Marinez's 
uh, uh, previous fight against Romero, like you just said, he's not he's not a boxer who just going to it's uh, not like an anamu boxer. You see, so I, I feel like it depends on the performance that he will be able to put up on against Mariners. Some people are very stubborn, but a fight can become a classic, even if, um, even if that is if he doesn't knock the guy out and then they go to the 12 rounds, the kind of performance that he will put up, will, I feel like can, can still shoot him and put his name back on the ground. I mean, that's how I feel. I don't know how you feel about it. My feeling is, um, as you are saying. Mariners is a skillful boxer. Yeah. Very, very skillful. And whenever that a banger go into the ring with a skillful boxer, and then the fight end in round 12, this is my point. The banger is less fortunate to get a decision. Okay. 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 And then uh, Mariners is a skillful boxer, but... I may say pillow handed. Mm. His knockout ratio will tell you that. Mm -hmm. So if uh, uh, Richard Comey is going into a fight with Mariners, the only thing is to bang him out. And mm. if you put Mariners' last fight into consideration, okay. he fight against Romero. Romero is a guy who relax and then bang you. But Richard Kome is the guy who will attack you with all pressure and bang you. So mm -hmm. what is Richard Kome got to do with decision? No, in this fight, decision for Richard Kome will not be something that especially me will accept. Okay. Because he has all the chances to corner this guy, counter him, uh, 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 like do so many things to corner the guy and then bang him out. Romero is not that type. Romero is a cool guy that when you position yourself, he will bang you and then he will right. not allow you to touch him in that in that manner. But Richard Come is uh, my, my friend. Uh, bring it. Why are you? What, what are what are you bringing? Bring it mm. out. I'm here for you. I send my own to you. That is Richard Come. So Richard Come is a guy who corner somebody and then bang the person. So. Romero right. might get that decision depending on how he go with it. Richard Come is somebody who can be touched. Romero is not that type. Richard Come, who is somebody who can corner you. Romero is not mm -hmm. that type. Richard Come is okay. somebody who can bang you. Okay? Right. Okay? Mm -hmm. That is in line with Romero. So if Richard okay. Come want to put a statement, okay, on this comeback, it should be knockout. And he's got really all the like chances. He got more than fifty percent chance to knock this guy out. Okay, okay, all right. Um, you've really made a very interesting analysis on that. And let me, willing, let me let, uh, let me Saturday put up night. something again. Okay, let me put up something again. You see, okay. Romero got the decision because he is not available so much to be tagged. Okay. Okay. Richard Kome is somebody who can be touched at any given time. So, if he did not use his count in his, uh, his steps and then uh, uh, corner this guy and then bang him out, and the guy gets a chance to use his hands, he has more hands, skills, and things like that, and then they finish the 12th round. In fact, Richard Kome might end up not getting the decision. Okay, okay. I think I understand the analysis that you mean, and it's very, it's very, um, uh, it, it makes a lot of sense. Um, but, so let's see what, what happens. And I know Komi is going to go to the ring with his own judge, and definitely the knockout will definitely be the, the difference. And so he'll be definitely looking to knock him out and to again, like he said, put his name back in the, in the mix of the 135. Um, People are available. Now, this week, Wasir Mohammed was also in the news. You know, um, Wasir has already been signed by DND uh, Boxing Promoters in the USA, one of uh, the promoters that are able to get uh, their fighters on Showtime. So we were very confident for him that he was going to step into the ring very soon. And guess what? Um, over the week, we saw an, an article which shows that, uh, or which stated that he'll be back in the ring on April uh, 10th. You know. Um, will be fighting 
the opponent that will be fighting is Florentino Hernandez. Um, and that will be the first the first time or was he be making his, 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 his US debut he fights Perez or uh, Florentino Perez Mateo Hernandez on the protest. Wasiri Mohammed, is it is this his time for you? Let me just ask you, is this his time? Kobe, if this is okay. the real time for Wasiru Mohammed, the best time for him. Hmm. I started talking about this guy not getting far outside Ghana for some time now, Kofi, as you know. Yeah. And now he got a chance to have uh, to, to get the the, 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 the this signing. Okay. Mm, mm, mm. So everything is left with him to do what he can do. Mm. And they arrange a fight for him in US for the first time. Right. So I don't want some <laughs> local thinking and things like that will enter into this game, this guy's head and then he will go there and mess up. You say local things, what do you mean? Local thinking. Oh, local the nightmare, thinking. yeah, local thinking. <laughs> the nightmare concerning our local boxes. Okay. When they get okay. to the bigger stage, they fumble. Right, I get you. Okay, those are the things. Mm. Most of our boxes, let me say it again. Wasiru is somebody who don't have exposure at all because he did not excel in the amateur team mm. like some other other guys. The mm -hmm. amateur team is the uh, uh, this thing which gives the chance to especially our Ghanaian boxers because the management that they are under and things like that don't help them to get those kind of minor fight outside and then get exposure and then know the terrain of what is going on in boxing world. They don't have that. They do be in the house, clearing anybody that is being put in front of them. But when they mm -hmm. get out, the crowd intimidates them. Some other things, things that they, they don't have experience about, how to right. eat, how to uh, uh, drink, how to, no, how to go around. They don't know that. I get you. You understand? And that is you. my only fear for Wasim Muhammad. Mm, mm. But if this guy is focused, okay, and then have a handleless that can take very good care of him, okay, Wasim is going there to put his name on the world of the map. Right, well, interesting. Uh, you know, uh, Wasiru has a lot of um, um, credit being given to him after a lot of people started say, or some people said that they saw a sparring with him and Isaac Dube, which he, he, you know, he kind of he sort of knocked Isaac Dube down before, even before Isaac Dube became a world champion. You know, and it's one of the things that people say a lot. And so, if you are comparing the strength and then the the pedigree of Wasiru, you want to put him slightly ahead of Dube because of what they have said or the video that people have seen. Now, I wanted to, to put, I wanted to put you the bring him to the level of Isaac Dube. All right. And let's look at this Hernandez that he'll be going to fight. What do you think all other things being equal? Assuming we still gets to the US on time, uh, he's able to get in some cool training, let me, let me say some weeks, a week or two training in the US before he mounts, into, he mounts the ring on April 10th in the US. What do you think will happen on the night? Uh, if I compare Wasiru with Dubi, what I will be saying is Wasiru is having the upper hand. I'm not talking about both of them fighting, mm. but I'm talking about the kind of type of fight that two of them fight. Okay. Then, okay. Both of them are bangers. Yeah. Okay. Both of them are bangers. Mm. Number two. They are not having the same size. Dubai is shorter than Wasiru. Okay. Number three, Wasiru can receive better than Dubai. Mm. Please, I want you to understand what I'm trying to say. Wasiru can receive. Yes, Wasiru can receive more than Dubai. 
but they are sending out are almost in at the same level. They send out strong punches and things like that. I I might put them on the same level, but to receive punches, Wasiru is stronger to receive punches than Dobi. Okay. 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 So there are fights that Dobi might lose, Wasiru might not lose those fights. Hmm. Are you trying to say something like the fight against? I'm not uh, saying that Wasiru is better than Dobi. That's not what I'm saying. Okay. I got you. I got you. You understand? Yeah, I understand you. The reason why I'm happy for for Wasiru for this fight is. He's going to fight against, yeah, he's going to fight against Mexica. Yeah. We all know the Mexi, Mexico boxers, how they go about their, uh, how they go about boxing in the ring. Mm -hmm. They will be there for you, whatever that, let's do it. And this is what mm -hmm. is advantage for Wasiru in this fight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because... This Mexican guy that I don't know so much about will go there with mentality of Mexico boxes. And then right. he will be there to bang. And then that mm. is where he will fall straight into Wasiru's trap. Right. And Wasiru will take him out before the time. Nice one. Nice. Nice one. Nice one. Anyway. The, ask about the plans on how to watch you like preparation for the fight. They said that the plans for Wasiru to eventually move to the US where he will get better facilities and better sparring. But after, at the moment, he's going to remain in Ghana and then as they prepare to make, um, make it put his documentation and everything together for him to move to the US. But for now, the plan is for him that when he moves to the US, he gets better sparring and then he gets better facilities to train. That's what his promoter. Cameron and uh, Duncan of D and D Promotion Center. So it looks like they really have a very good plan for the boy. Ah, uh, Kofi, that is the saying anyway, and that is what it should be. So that is what we Ghanaians and then Wasiru followers should pray for. We all know what happened if these things come in like this. Sometimes you see Ghanaian boxers going out without their coach. That is one de de denominator that will disadvantage the boxer. Mm. If they do anything like that in this fight, Wasiru is going there to feel uncomfortable and finally losing the fight. Mm. Because this is the guy from his infancy or from his starting of boxing, he know only one coach, okay? Mm. He never travel outside before. He never fight outside anywhere before. He's always with his coach. Maybe you might talk about some other coaches, but that time might be during the uh, 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 amateur time. And in amateur time, his coach is part of the amateur coaches. So he only know one way. Okay? But if they try that mistake for his coach not to travel with him and do things with him for this fight, that will be the biggest problem for Wasiru in this fight. And it will hunt him throughout his boxing career. Interesting. Interesting. Um, you've really made a very solid point about the coaching. I hope that the, the, the team um, help get his coach with, to rally or to move with him when he goes to USA to fight. Because I know the bond that this two um, coach... Uh, you're talking about Coach Latte Quilate. So the coach... Coach yes, Latte, Coach Latte, and then what you uh, I know the bond that they share, so I hope that the two of them will be able to both move to the US, prepare him, and then you know start bringing glory to to, to Mother Ghana. Now let's look at the boys that was is possible to, to fight after he's able to see over, uh, take care of uh, uh, Hernandez. He could fight Stephen uh, Stephen Fulton, who's currently the the champion. He could also fight uh, Luis Neri and Angelo Leo, the former champion too, as well. Is also in queue. And you know, and and, and then and uh, Daniel Roman, you know, he's also a, a former who was even unified, right? So he was a unified champion in the division before he lost his title. So these are the possible guys that he could fight, including the 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 the, the Uzbekistan fighter uh, Muron John. Muron John. I'm sure you know that guy, the guy who defeated Angelo Leo. Uh, sorry, Daniel. Roman to collect his his two titles. These are the kind of guys that Masiru will, will be fighting 
eventually if you relocate to the USA after seeing over Hernandez. What do you think um, his chances are against all these names that I have mentioned? Yeah, uh, Wasiru have a very high chance to uh, to counter these guys and then defeat them. Mm. He have a very, very high chances because most of these guys, if I see them fighting, I don't see that leak type of uh, boxing in them. Mm -hmm. And that is the only thing that I believe can disturb Wasiru, okay. which he's not matured to know for now. Mm -hmm. And he have all the chances within some two, three, four fights in the U.S. He will get to know that, hey, this is the second thing that he got to know in boxing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So mm -hmm. once I did not see any slickness in these guys, whenever that they come across uh, 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 Wasiru, there's no way they are going to win the fight. They okay. will end up losing and losing by knockout. Mm -hmm. Interesting, interesting. Now, enough of Ghana talking about our Syria, talking about which you call me. Let's jump straight into the world. Um, you know, um, Ryan Garcia wanted to fight Manny Pacquiao, and Manny Pacquiao had his own issue going on. You know, he, he had to deal with the WBA issue, so the WBO uh, made him a champion in recess, and in the process, now we have um, Ugaris being the WBA super world uh, super WBA world uh, super welterweight champion. I mean, this news. How did you receive it? First of all, it's a confusion. <laughs> Total confusion. confusion. Who is confusing you? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> we are talking about titles. In fact, <laughs> yeah, total confusion. Oh, right. uh, the, 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 the organizations are confusing everybody. They are, even they are confusing them all selves. <laughs> the time that they sit down and then are ready for this thing, if you call them back or you take one of them to interview him about what is the meaning of this, you 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 end up getting more confused than before. Crazy. You understand? They Crazy. themselves don't know what they are talking about. Is that is that Crazy. something that is in the arrangement that they call somebody super because the person now it's like the boxer is ruling the organization. Is that the way that what they are trying to tell us? The something boxer really is now ruling the organization. About, about, if I don't want to fight, then he put me somewhere comfortable. What, what, what does it mean? <laughs> no, something what does really it mean? Needs, something really needs to be done about no, this. Super during the time that they will tell you things. that, hey, this is mandatory, go and fight. If you can, you are not able to fight it within some two, three months, relinquish the title. Where is that rule? That you rule, know, where is it? You know? So they should put somebody aside and then give the title to somebody and then some other. Some <laughs> <laughs> something really needs to be done, Amedola. Something really needs to be done because it's, it's taking away. It's taking away the way you know that because there are too many. There are so many champions. Can, can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Uh, I think I think you can hear me. Can you hear me? Kujo, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, I can hear you, Govin. Okay, I'm saying that something really needs to be now. done about this. Super bad, like this champ. This champ, there are so many champions. There are so many champions now. We have super champion. It, it is, it is making, it is making boxing even less attractive. Apart from the fact that we are even accepting more YouTubers to come fight now, these sanctioning bodies need to sit down and you know clean the division properly, where we can have one champion and not have like a, a regular champion and a super champ. All these things is what is causing the confusion. Kofi, exactly that's what it is. And now you see people handling titles that you don't know what kind of title is that and things like that. This is the same uh, under one umbrella. Titles are many. You don't know who is the champion. And then he's now making the whole thing like the best cannot mm. fight the best. Mm. You understand? Mm. 
the bears cannot fight the bears. How come ah, this uh, Bani Pakao hold the title for about two years now? He didn't fight with the title. Almost a year. And people are there waiting to fight for title. Mm. They can't get the title to fight for. So if somebody fight Ugas now and then what are they fighting for? So if <laughs> the winner will become the WBA, what? I don't understand. <laughs> and then Paka will be somewhere. And then ah, he didn't retire from so, boxing. And then his title is there. Nobody is fighting for the title. What what confusion is this? Is that what it's supposed to be? That is what you are saying, that if these people will come together and then cleanse, okay, cleanse everything so that we know that this is the main title, this is, maybe they might add uh, uh, some other titles, it might be the, 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 the uh, interim championship, and then maybe the third, maybe they might make it silver champion, bronze champion, it's understanding. But the main title should be dead, and then everybody should fight for it. Whoever qualified to fight for it should fight for it. Right, right. Then they, oh, oh, somebody is there. He didn't fight for some years. They say, oh, we are making you a special champion. We are making you champion races. franchise champion. We are making you. And then after that, you don't know where that title is going. You don't know anything about it. They themselves, the organizers themselves, will come back and be telling you some story that you never know of. Yeah, true. Just like they are saying that the franchise title is something that you have to come and nail down for them. And tell them that you want franchise. And the franchise is only for <laughs> For hey, you cannot. Nobody can fight you unless you yourself you want to fight that person. And nothing. Uh, confusion. It's, it's confusion. a lot of confusion. It's a lot of confusion. It's a lot of confusion. You know. So I, I hope I hope they can clean the division, and then you know we can have boxing as interesting as it used to be. I'm not saying it is not interesting now. But we just want to get at least one title being competed for, so that everybody falls in line. You know, so that the, those who become the mandatory challengers or the, those who fight to become the final eliminators really get a spot at the title and then fight. But the good thing about this thing is that now that you guys have also been made the WBA um, super champion, it means that he's eligible to unify because um, as a regular champion, you can't unify. But if you, be a, if you are a WBA super, it means you are really eligible to, to unify. And so you are looking at a fight between him and Errol Spence or a fight against um, Terence Crawford. So between you guys, be between these two fighters, if you were you guys, who would you have want, who would you have, like, would you, would you, would you want to be paired with? There's so many breaks in the line. Oh, can you come oh, okay. up with the message again? Okay, but can you hear me now? Or is it is it breaking still? Kofi. Kofi, I'm saying that there's a whole lot of breaks. Oh, okay. In the tra okay, uh, I think I think. Um, you would have to try again and so that you can get him back on. But don't forget that last week, you, go, you guys was uh, upgraded to become the WBA super champion after the, day, after the, after the sanctioning body making Manny Pacquiao a champion in recess. So it means that now you guys is eligible to unify of or compete in uh, uni title unification bouts. And when he posted a tweet about him being, you know, um, upgraded to become a WBA super champion. He, he went on right away to say that he's really ready to fight the top guys in the division or unify against the top guys in the division. And if you are looking at the people who have the title now, the IBF and then the WBC titles are with Errol Spence and WBO title is with um, Terrence Crawford. So it means he has two people to choose from. Either he fights Terrell, Terrell Spence, uh, Terrence Crawford or he fights Errol Spence. And so I was trying to get from Amedoda who he would have wanted Ugas to fight, you know, 
or if he was Ilas, who he would have wanted to fight. And that is what I'll be asking him as soon as I add him onto the show. Um, could you can you hear me now? Yes, please. It's clear now. All right, thank you. So mm -hmm. I was saying that um, Spence and Crawford are the top dogs in the division. They have three titles between them. Um, Spence has the IBF and the WBC, and then we also have um, Terrence Crawford having the WBO title. And now that you guys have been upgraded to become the WBA uh, Super World Champion, it means he's eligible to compete for unification bouts. And I was asking that if you were to be Ugas, between Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford, who, who would you have selected or chose to fight first? Is it is the light still breaking? Is the light still breaking? Can you hear me? Is the light still breaking, my brother? Could you? The light is still breaking. Uh, for me, yeah, it's still breaking anyway. But for me, not a fight that would disturb any of uh, 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 any of between Terence Crawford and uh, Errol Spence. Mm. That's no fight for them. Who guys is no fight for Terence Crawford or uh, Errol Spence? Mm. So I don't see anything that interesting in a fight between these people. Oh. The, the, fight the, the real fight over there now should be uh, Crawford versus Spence, Money versus Crawford, Spence versus Money. That is the fight over there that the boxing would love to see. Well, Ugas is a B class boxer, so um, among them, Ugas is B class. So, anybody that he chooses to go against, the person who take the title from him, I mean, that is not even a title, so me, I don't even see it to be unification. So, you don't think you don't think you guys really can really you guys can really do anything in the division at all? You, you, you think anybody he fights, he will lose among these two guys, he will lose to them. Oh, Among these okay. two guys, you who look to them. Even if uh, uh, this guy come up, what's the name? Uh, Sean Porter come up to face Ugas. Sean Porter will take that title simple. Wow, interesting. That's an interesting statement. C can you hear me? It's difficult. Hmm. The, the network, I, I can, I can, I can, I, yeah, the network is breaking. But I, I hope you can hear me now. Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Okay, now let's jump straight to the Estrada versus Chocola title fight. You know, after a very long time, uh, I mean, a very long time, you know, it looks like we are going to get that rematch. Um, and it's, I think it's scheduled somewhere around March. What do you expect uh, in the rematch? Uh. Chocolatino is a guy that is surprising people because he was in the scene for a very long time and then later on dropped. But after mm. dropping, he did not relax. He came up and then started doing wonders again. Yeah. So I am believing that he get a chance to, because he have the experiences and things like that. So he ha he's having a chance to do something better with the rematch. No, Estrada was 21 years when he was fighting Chocolate Tito. It looks like over that over over a period of time he's been able to gain experience and now he seems to be a very a very good fight. In fact, fighter, in fact, his last fight, he even knocked his opponent out. The same with Chocolate Tito. But I mean it's almost like he's I think he's a veteran of the game because he's very old now. But then like we see Manny Pacayo do, he's also doing the same. He took out he took he took down a very young Yafai. 
many people thought he was going to be knocked out, but he, <laughs> the story was interesting. He knocked Jafai out, and he didn't just knock him out. He knocked him out in a very brilliant, brilliant, and a, I mean, a, a very devastating manner. You understand? And to make a statement, in fact, going to that fight, uh, the pundits were saying that if Chocolatito wins the fight, the fight that should be made should be the one against Estrada. So I'm very excited that Matchroom Boxing has put this one together for fans to see. What will, to you, what is your prediction of this particular fight? Will it still be the same results that we saw in 2000, I think 2012 or 2014, or we will see a very different result on uh, on 20, uh, on, uh, in March, sorry. Yeah. Uh, 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 what I will say is, uh, Chocolatino have the upper hand because he's so much experience and then he tried it one thing in boxing is when you are a champion, okay, it do enter into your head, no matter how careful you are. Yeah. Apart from Floyd Mayweather, I mm -hmm. never see anybody doing it. Mm. No matter how, whatever, it do enter into your head, you are a champion, hey, that mm -hmm. is you. Mm -hmm. Okay. But after the step backs, you get to gather yourself and then move on. So, mm. experience is just the best part of boxing. Mm. So, I still believe Chocolatino will come up successful in this fight. Interesting. Now, let's talk about the only fighter that has gone 50 fights without a defeat. We're talking about the man Floyd Manyweather Jr. Today, uh, he posted uh, to, um, something on Instagram which has sparked a lot of you know, talk in the boxing world. You know, he says this year is going to focus on a lot of ex exhibition fights. He has one with uh, J uh, Jake Paul. He has one also with Logan Paul. And the name that he dropped that everybody was like, hey, really? Is it going to happen? Yes. He says that he would like to fight uh, 50 Cent. You know, 50 Cent already said on radio that um, he's one of, the fight that he would like, one of the fighters that he would like to fight. But then he doesn't know if he'll be able to make weight for the fight. But guess what? 50 Cent... Uh, um, he might get his, his wish, you know, of fighting the flood money Mayweather, you know, because Mayweather is saying that he'll be willing to fight him at any weight, but if the, if the pair of them, if the two of them clash, it's going to be a winner takes all kind of fight. <laughs> what do you think? What do you think about this thing? <laughs> <laughs> Let me jump into the winner take all something. Is okay. it? <laughs> Is it? <laughs> Uh, 50 Cent and uh, Manny Mayweather were very mm. good friends. Mm, okay. Um, Manny, uh, 50 Cent do hold uh, a, 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 a belt, Mayweather's belt around his waist and necks and things like that, and then be rapping, taking Mayweather into the ring. Okay. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, there was a blood blood between them. Okay. And then, yeah. <laughs> they want to capitalize, and everybody was like, "Ah, what is happening?" Okay, right. people were, right. were around them, and then these two guys want to capitalize on that thing, and mm -hmm. then to make money, mm -hmm. and then Mayweather is trying to rob. <laughs> <laughs> How is he trying yeah. to rob him? He says he's going to be yeah. a lunatic. So <laughs> uh -huh. that's a, that's robbery. How is it robbery? That's robbery. Oh yeah, how you see all these guys, no matter no matter how strong they are or whatever, there's no way they are going to beat uh, Mayweather in boxing. Even if Mayweather is holding walking, okay, none of them, these Paul and Jake and whatever, none of them can beat Mayweather in boxing. Mayweather is a boxer, very experienced and things like that. So yeah. no matter whatever. There's no way any of these guys can be in the ring with Mayweather and win a fight. Everybody, right. Mayweather know that very well. And then I believe 50 mm. Cent himself, nothing should deceive him. And if he mm. signed that deal, that means he's going to work. This is why you say, <laughs> monkey, they work, bamboo, they chop. <laughs> Interesting. But you know, <laughs> of the names that many, uh, Mayweather mentioned, one of them has told them that that is uh, the, the, the younger brother. That's uh, Logan Paul. He's saying that's for him. He's no uh, Jake Paul. He's saying he's not going to take that um, uh, fight. 
uh, if it is an exhibition fight, he is a boxer. He says he's a boxer. Mm -hmm. So if Mayweather wants to fight him, he has to be the one that goes into the record. What do you think? Uh, this uh, uh, Logan guy saying this, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what, is, <laughs> what is his fight record? Uh, which people did he fight to make a record? And then when did he start his uh, uh, boxing whatever career? And yeah. he'll be saying that, uh, who know him in boxing? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you understand? Uh, so if this guy yeah, come yeah, out yeah. and then they are saying, you see, me, I consider these things in the uh, 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 minor side of boxing, the, okay. what should I say, uh, the funny side of boxing. Yeah. It, this shouldn't be part of boxing. It should be part of uh, 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 entertainment. But some people will challenge you and say that, hey, boxing is entertainment. But, well, I don't consider that. <laughs> so he should go back and think about himself again. If we put this into boxing, nobody will watch it. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. 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 Okay, man. Okay. Um, I think these are the topics that we, we will talk about today. Uh, but before you go, I would like to get your last words uh, before you go, my brother. The internet is really messing us up today. Can you hear me? Come again, please. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you in a way. Come again, please. Yeah, yeah. Today the network is messing us up. So let's close the show or let's end the show on this on, on, on the topics that we've talking we've talking about today. But then before you go, I would like to get your last words uh, before we sign out. Yeah, uh, Kofi, what I'll say finally is about uh, Wasiru Muhammad. And then mm. what is happening around him? Mm. Uh, the managers of Wasiru Muhammad over here, the Ghanaian mm. managers, mm -hmm. should be very careful with the deal that they are having with the foreign managers. Mm. And then they make sure that everything is in a place to favor Wasiru Muhammad. Mm. That kind of, hey, now we sign you to another this thing we are waiting for our share and things mm. like that should not be in this case they should mm. make sure that even if anything at all Washi wasiru should still stay with his coach mm. who is latekwe for a very long time if anything at all he should be with latekwe for a very long time before going out into another coach's hand if okay. not so, Wasiru will be messed up in with his boxing career. Mm -hmm. That is the main thing. They shouldn't say that, hey, he's going to US, so they should allow him to go to US and go and then no, without Latikwe. They have to allow this guy to be with Latikwe. Wherever that he's going, they have to allow him to be with Latikwe and then go there with him, whatever. But these are our managers especially our local managers, they don't care about the boxes. They don't think about the boxes. They are only thinking about what is coming into their coffers. So whenever that they get their share or whenever things are well for them to get their share, they leave the boxes around and then to do whatever, or whatever that happened to them, it's not their concern and things like that. That is something that will not help Wasiru Muhammad. They might think he's winning his fight, knockout and things like that. When you get to US, they work against you. If you don't have your coach, even the other coach, what he's saying, it will be something very new to you. You will not know about it. You are No matter how long you are in the gym with him, there's no way you can make it. And Wasiru is somebody who will fall short of that immediately. So please, the managers to come together and then work this boy. For this boy, They should try and make it for Wasiru 
to get there and then raise the flag of Ghana very high. All right. I really get what you said, and it's a lot of details, and I hope that the managers who watch this and they will take it into consideration. Because I know for a fact that Akotuk Kudlatu Kulate will be with them as he moves to the USA to go prepare for the fight against Hernandez. And I'm sure you've said things which um, many people or many Ghanaians who agree with you, especially, you know, you know, we are sick and tired of fighters going and coming and telling us that um, because their trainer didn't go with them, that's how, come, that's how they lost. Like with Duke Michael going and then coming with the excuse he gave. I mean, so now, I'm, I'm, like you said, a lot of the boxers have given that excuse. So with a promising talent like um, Wasim Mohammed, we hope that he'll be able to stick with his trainer for a very long time, get out there, shine and Continue working with, with his trainer because on many platforms, as you himself have said that it is the, he is the man that has made him, you know. So, um, I hope they can they'll be able to stay together or work for a very long time to collect some, you know, some, some successes along the line before if even they want to switch line, they switch line. Because, like you said, no, like I said, I'm sick of tired of fighters going and coming and telling us that because their trainers was weren't with them, that's how they come, they lost. And so um, I really thank you. I really, I really, I really agree with what you have said, and I think it, it makes a lot of sense. All right, guys, this is how we end the show for today. It's your boy Kofi Basic Jr. I was here with Kutan Bedo. That's a total boxing show today. Unfortunately, then I saw couldn't join us. We hope to get him on the show called really next week, Thursday, where we also digest things that are going to happen. The good thing is that next week, um, we'll have a show on Saturday because after the Thursday show, which will be our regular show, we'll come here on th on Saturday night after um, Richie Kome defeats Mariners, which we are very hopeful that he'll be able to do. And then we'll come here and then celebrate with all the Ghanaians who will be able to, who will be on K-Box, who will be awake around that time to celebrate the victory of um, Richie Kome. Also this week, I'll try and see if I can get Richie Kome himself on the show and then, you know, get his, his final preparations as he goes into the ring on Saturday night against uh, Mariners. If I don't get him, I'll try his manager, uh, Amu Bediako, and get some updates from him so I can bring it to all Ghanaian and then African, who are who Africans to be watching um, Richard Kome on Saturday night. Um, any, any other thing that you'd like to talk about? Any other thing? Or that's it. Any other thing? I believe for now that is it. Okay, okay, all right, guys. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube, kindly jump onto the YouTube link, it's in the description. Click on it and then subscribe. So, anytime that we come here, you'll be notified and watch Amaluda and myself, Cable uh, Coffee Basic TV, here on Kbox TV, where we talk about boxing. But until then, if you're a boxer, keep grinding hard, keep working hard, your chance will come. If you're also a guy African out there representing the, uh, the, the motherland, hope we, we are with you. We just wish you be the best of luck. I know Rimal Awal is in Dubai currently on a training tour. I had a, I had a word with his trainer, uh, his, his manager, uh, Fawaz, who says that his boy is there trying to acclimatize himself with other conditions and working out with uh, other fighters or sparring other fighters in, other, um, in Dubai to get him ready because once he comes back to Nigeria, he'll be having a fight soon. So we're, we're with our boy in, in Dubai wishing the very best out there has as he continues to prepare and train, you know, and the same way, I know there are also two Nigerians who are also out of out of the UK currently also preparing and, um, and training. Unfortunately, because fights haven't really started in UK, they haven't been able to step into the ring, but they're still training and still preparing. I wish them well also far back in the UK. And hopefully when they get a chance to jump into the ring, they'll be able to, you know, um, um, give the fans a very beautiful performance. This week, Unfortunately, two two boxers have uh, last week. Unfortunately, two fighters died. One is from Pakistan, and the other one too is from Nigeria. Um, we, when they are so rest in peace. They, like I always say, that anybody that mounts the ring, it's it's not easy. You know, it's not easy. So any fighter that mounts the ring, we have our total support and prayer. That's why we don't really want to hear it when they put old fighters in the ring. Or when the trainers are also not sorry, the referee are not really, really on their guard on, on, on the night. So we we, we 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 pray that boxers, please make sure that you take your life very seriously. It is you first. Take a decision which is always going to favor you. Don't take a decision that's going to favor anybody. Unlike these guys that they, they, they are deaf, it is not something related to boxing, though. But just so you know, make sure you take a very good care of yourself so that you know you'll be able to live long and not have some sort of um um injury which is going to affect your career and all that but like i said we wish a nigerian fighter and then the pakistan 
fighter that that those died last week. We wish them. Uh, we, we 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 send our condolences to their family and we pray that they are so rest in peace. So that I mean, um, yeah. So that uh, I don't even know what to say, but like, may their souls rest in peace. All right. So until we come your way, God willing, start um, Thursday and again on Saturday. Guys, have a very good night. And when you say a prayer, stay one for us too. We really appreciate your time. Stay blessed.